Okay, so this is about trying to um, learn in a lecture and reading course when you're doing it online. So I think of the lecture reading courses as your standard college course. You uh, watch a lecture and there are PowerPoint slides and you have reading you have to do and at some point you're tested. Maybe there are papers, but the classic thing is you go to lecture, you take a bunch of notes, you do a bunch of reading, and then you're tested along the way. Um, so things to think about when you're uh, in one of these classes and it's, and it's online and you're not actually going to class, you're doing it all on your computer. So the, the key thing, whether it's online or not, is, is in these courses is to try and figure out how to get these things to work together because very often people just kind of deal with them totally separately. I take my notes in class and I do my reading and I don't necessarily do them at the same time that they're supposed to be done. And then before the test, I go over all my notes uh, that I haven't looked at since I took them and I try and catch up on all the reading that I haven't done or I did it before and now I forgot what it said. Um, so. Uh, what you'd like to do is to see if you can integrate these things better, right? So we're trying to figure out a way to integrate the lecture um, and the reading so that you're learning these things together, which is the way it really is supposed to be. So in order to integrate these things, um, a good way of doing it is to try and figure out, okay, what am I doing before lecture, and what am I doing after lecture? Um, and if it's online, even during lecture, because if it's recorded, then you can pause it and you can do stuff uh, and so on, okay? Um, but, all right, so before and after, okay, so before, before lecture, this is when you're usually supposed to do the reading. So in a quote unquote normal class, um, you are assigned some reading and you do that reading before you watch the lecture. And sometimes there are even assignments, there are things you have to do in lectures and questions you have to answer or whatever. So you're supposed to do the reading before. Um, most college students do not do the reading before class. Um, they do it at some other point or they don't do it at all. And so I think that it's often a better strategy not to try and read very completely, um, but just to preview the reading before class. So that means to try and spend less time on the reading before class because then you can you have more time to maybe do something with it after class, okay? Um, so students are often all or nothing. They'll do the reading very, very completely, take lots of notes on it, highlight everything, and it takes a really, really long time. Um, and then they get into class and they realize actually that they didn't actually get all that much out of all that time spent on the reading. Um, so if you spend less time and just preview the reading, and by previewing, I mean just trying to pay attention to what are some of the main ideas, um, what are possibly some of the key terms. Um, if it's a textbook, the textbook is actually set up to do exactly this kind of reading, looking at the different headings and the pictures and the things set apart in uh, the chapter in little boxes or in diagrams, questions at the end, objectives at the beginning, just looking at all of that stuff and just taking literally a few minutes sometimes, you can actually get a better idea of what the main ideas are in a chapter than if you spent hours reading it uh, for detail. So I think actually previewing reading is a good reading strategy anyway, that even if you're, you are gonna spend a lot of time reading something, you wanna preview it first so you get some idea of the structure of things.
okay? And so uh, two big advantages here. One is that you go to lecture or you, you, you watch the lecture on your computer and you actually have this sense of what's going to happen because um, you have done the reading. Even if you haven't spent hours on it, you know what's in there and so you can already be making that connection between the lecture and the reading. Um, and, and often less time you get more out of than spending more time, ironically. Okay, so that's, that's before class. The, the key thing for me, all right, so before we're just previewing, okay, before we watch the lecture, we're just previewing the reading, not getting bogged down in details, trying to just get the bigger picture. After class or after lecture, this is when the learning can, can really happen. Um, so during lecture, whether you're in class or online, generally people are taking notes um, and, and maybe you're picking things up, maybe you're not. Um, some people who take lots and lots and lots of notes, often they find that it, the class itself is kind of a blur because they're so busy just taking notes. Um, and so they have nice notes that they can use later, but they're not actually beginning the learning process in any significant way. Other people who just pay attention to the lecture and don't take a lot of notes, maybe they can actually pick up more during class, but then they don't have a record of, of having uh, watched the lecture and in a day or so, it'll all be gone. So. The, the key thing for learning for me is really this after lecture time. And um, it's, it's if I can actually do something with the material, um, so trying to do something active, something hands-on, then I'm actually learning the material or beginning the process of learning the material in a substantial way as opposed to just take a bunch of notes and then you just forget about it and then the test comes around and you have to relearn everything. Okay, so um, a good activity for your standard lecture and reading class is to compare what went on in class. So in class, you, the lecture, you've got um, the notes you've taken. Um, you might have uh, PowerPoint slides. PowerPoint slides. Um, sorry, this is. And then on the other side, you've got the reading, okay? And so you can look at these things literally side by side, right? So you could have your notes on your laptop or in your notebook. You've got your slides on your laptop. You've got the reading in a book or on your laptop. Maybe it's all there on the computer and literally looking at these things side by side and seeing how they compare to one another, okay? So um, what's really nice about this is that you're actually doing something. Lots of students talk about going over their notes on a regular basis, but almost nobody ever does it. And it's, it's not just because people are lazy or they've run out of time, although they probably have run out of time, but I think that the whole going over your notes thing, reviewing your notes, people just don't know what they're doing with it. And you look at it, you flip through the pages, and because it's not a real activity, it seems kind of pointless, and so people don't do it. If you do something like comparing, it's a real activity where you're seeing, um, on the one hand, the lecture can actually point out to you what's important in the reading. So you've just previewed the reading before, but instead of sitting down and starting at the beginning and just slogging through the whole thing after class, what happened in class, what happened in the lecture, will point out to you what to look at in the reading. Um, in, on the other hand, also, the reading can help to augment, um, so you can either add 
or clarify what happened in lecture, what's in the slides from what's uh, in the reading. So maybe there's something that you missed or didn't, that didn't make a lot of sense in class. Um, then you look at that corresponding part of the reading and you can actually get something out of that. And again, we're doing kind of an integration thing where we're, we're working with both of these things in a hands-on way um, and actually learning in the way that the material is uh, uh, meant to be learned. 